Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Today we're going to do something a little different. Usually when I have something to say, something random to say, like a thought piece or whatever, I write a post and I put it on the website, missingremote.com. That seems like a good place for most of these kinds of things, but today I'm going to try to do it as a video, just because. And today we're going to talk about the Span I.O. panel. I recently posted on the site that we might be using the Span I.O. service panels in the passive house that we're building. We're not going to do that. I'll get into why I don't think Span is right for us and why I suspect that Span, at least in its current state, isn't the right solution for most all electric homes in a bit. First, we're going to fill in some gaps around what Span panel is, how it works, what it does, and where it might be the right solution. The SPAN panel is a smart, smart electric service panel, also known as a load center, that provides intelligence around consumption and does some prioritized load shedding. So it doesn't go unsaid. I think that SPAN is doing something really neat. The approach seems solid, and I love that you can use standard circuit breakers with it, but there are some drawbacks. First, let's cover some of the, the basic specs. The panel supports up to 200 amp loads with a 225 amp bus bar. The bus bar is over spec mostly for AC coupled PV. That lets you have a little extra headroom when you're connecting your AC solar panels to the span. All the critical intelligence runs locally on the panel. So you don't have to worry about what happens when the internet goes down, but it does have a cloud dependency. You won't be able to change any settings without an active internet connection, whether that's through your home internet or the backup cellular that's built into the, into the panel. The panel cost is $3,500 each. That might come down to $2,900 per panel after federal tax credits. It is important to say that loud and clear. It is very expensive per panel to deploy these things, and that does not include installation cost. The two key features are circuit level monitoring and load shedding. It is very cool to be able to track electricity consumption. You don't need to spend anywhere close to that to get this feature though. I recently reviewed a $165 Emporia View 2, which does exactly that, just to provide some context. So the main value and what you're mostly paying for is in the load shedding feature. As you probably know, load shedding is when steps are taken to reduce aggregate energy demand on specific circuits, generally when consumption crosses a threshold, like the service limit, 200 amps for example. Usually this means turning off the load, but it can also involve throttling the load if the panel and the device are integrated. EV charging is a great example of both types. If you don't have one of SPAN's EVSE, it will turn off that circuit or essentially unplug it when that threshold is crossed. If we use SPAN's terminology, we'll, we'll say pause instead. If you do have a SPAN drive, their EVSE, it can throttle back the charging level to get it under that threshold limit, taking it from 48 amps to 20 amps, for example. Besides the span drive, there aren't very many smart integrations right now. The only other one that I'm aware of is Mitsubishi's air source heat pumps, where they can re request reduced heating demand when, when approaching that threshold. Everything else that gets shed, it basically flips a relay in the panel that shuts that load off. So if you choose to shed devices like a dryer or a stove, you're gonna lose state. Or put another way, your dryer won't start back up again when the circuit gets unpaused and you'll end up with wet laundry. Long-term, hopefully we get integration standards around smart load shedding because there would be magic in being able to actually pause the dryer, the water heater, or really any other non-time sensitive, high demand appliance when that threshold is crossed. Load shedding isn't just when approaching the service limit either. It can also come into play if you have batteries and the grid is down. The span panel can use the circuit prioritization to extend how long you can continue to power critical loads in the house. You do have to have a supported battery inverter system though. They do work with the big uh, all-in-one inverter battery providers like Tesla and Enphase, but they don't support everyone. If your battery isn't on their list, you're out in the cold. Maybe literally. I think there are two areas where span panel makes sense. 
The primary one is for retrofitting homes that are near their service limit when they want to add something like an EV charger. And moving to the next service level is prohibitively expensive. Similar to that use case is when building a traditional home where the electrical load calculation is just over 200 amps and making the jump from 200 amps to 400 amps doesn't make sense financially. The NEC or National Electric Code allows using load shedding devices in those scenarios. So you can get a permit where you wouldn't otherwise. So that's where it works. Where does it not work? The easy answer is any property with 400 amp or greater service. There are some nuances to that where it may work, but with caveats. Essentially, span panels are 200 amp silos. There's no way to combine multiple panels into a single logical entity. I understand why it works that way. 200 amps is probably where the volume is. But even in our current not high performance house with a nat natural gas furnace and water heater and dryer, we have 400 amp service. It definitely exists in homes that aren't all electric. For all electric homes, unless it's tiny, you're gonna need 400 amp service for the heat pumps, water heater, EV charger, stove, cooktop, etc. It would be very difficult to do it any other way. We're gonna put 600 amp service in, which only makes that 200 amp silo thing worse. With uh, an ADU or apartment above the detached garage, two EV chargers, three air source heat pumps, two water heaters, two cooktops, two stoves, etc. Trying to make it work with 400 amps was not going to be a workable strategy. And it didn't make sense financially either. Moving from 400 amp to 600 amp service should cost us around $7,000, which is a lot of money. But when you put it in the context of what a span panel costs somewhere between $2,900 and $3,500 each. And we would have needed three of them, two for the house and one for the ADU. The math just doesn't work. I suspect that the math is going to be tough in many places where a span panel would otherwise be perfect. Uh, according to homeguide.com, the average cost of upgrading your service, your electrical service, runs between $1,200 and $4,000. When a span panel costs at least $2,900 before installation, that's a tough sell. Now, of course, that's an average, and there are definitely locations where it would cost significantly more to upgrade, or you may not be able to do it at all because the local grid is maxed out. In those scenarios, $2,900 or even $3,500 might totally make sense. But if you just look at the numbers, it's a really hard sell for most people in, in most places. Again, I think what they're doing is really neat. I hope that the company does well. I hope that they can get the price down of the panel to a level which makes it competitive with service upgrades. But it's really hard, even if they get to parity, to sell something that ultimately delivers less than the thing that you would get if you upgraded your service. Because in order to make it work, you have to lose capability, you have to lose loads. So you're foregoing EV charging or water heating or heating capacity instead of just paying the same amount of money to get more. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, let me know what you think about thought pieces as videos. Maybe this worked, maybe this didn't work. Maybe I should go back to writing these things instead of saying these things out loud. Anyway, Leave your comments, questions below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.